Right, here we go. Back again. Back again. All right. And today, it is the second instalment of Done Previously Fought Syndrome. All right. And it has been a very busy week for uh, the Syndrome. And, of course, all the agendas at play. Right. And we've touched on it many times before. But to get straight into it, this is from five hours ago, our good friends at space.com, and the date would have been uh, the 14th of July, 2020. And it says, the moon is 85 million years younger than previously thought. Huh. Now, uh, they didn't study moon rock or petrified wood. They used computer modelling. What a surprise, right? And uh, this is 13 hours ago from Yahoo Finance and it says the 2008 recession was far worse for young people's careers than previously thought. What a surprise, right? And uh, yeah, even stuff as far back as that are now appearing to be worse. And it most likely, uh, well, it was uh, bad, the recession, and for young people in 2008. But again, this is to fit a certain narrative or agenda, similar to this one uh, from the Daily Mail two hours ago. Uh, Indigenous Australian site was in use 22,000 years earlier than previously thought. So yeah, that'll fit a certain agenda. Uh, Five days ago, uh, our friends at physics.org Lightning data, more useful than previously thought. So, yeah, now they're going to be using uh, lightning data to get information from to fit a certain narrative. Look out for it. Uh, One week ago, Voice of America, EU economic outlook, bleaker than, yep, previously thought. And this will continue. This is one of those um, headlines that will fast become um, a common fixture and it won't it won't be just in Europe it will be right across the world because uh, let's face it they are determined to destroy the world economy and they're doing a good job about it that's for sure let's face it Uh, look around and uh, I seen this as well one hour ago and this was on the 15th of July And it's from The Conversation UK. So you know it's good stuff. And it says, How your car sheds microplastics into the ocean thousands of miles away. Huh. Now how does that happen? Uh, I wonder, right? So let's look at this one. Uh, And it says, The impact of car of car travel on the environment is well known. Right. Exhaust emissions pollute the atmosphere with gases that raise global temperatures and make the air less safe to breathe. Right. Sadly. Okay. The problems don't end there. Right. Scientists have been studying another problem and one that connects your daily commute to the most remote stretches of the world's oceans. Oh dear, now, what could it be, right? Well, it says, a new study has revealed that microplastics released from car tyres and brake systems are a major source of marine plastic pollution. Oh dear, much more than previously thought. Every year, 100,000 metric tonnes of microplastics are shed from tyres, transported through the air and dumped in the ocean. Another 40,000 tonnes comes from brakes. To put that in perspective, if the average scrapped car tyre is around 9 kilograms, then the total weight of microplastics reaching the sea each year equates to just under 11 million tyres. 
Right, so you can see what they're doing here. Uh, cars haven't got long, that's for sure. Not cars as we know it, because they're going to be scrapped. And yeah, your commute to work or to the shop is now throwing tyres in the ocean. Basically, that's what they're saying. And uh, it also said, microplastics don't just harm sea creatures, though we now know that their proliferation in the world's soils has reduced how successfully worms reproduce and even affected the growth of crops. Damn straight. And we already touched on this before in regards to microplastics and nanoplastics and how they affect plants and are even changing the genetic makeup of plants. So with all that, uh, bearing all that in mind, uh, how it affects the sea and the soil and the plants, what on earth is it doing to us, right? Now that is a fucking question for sure. But yeah, real journalists don't exist. And there's no one there to ask real questions, unfortunately. So yeah, look that one up if you want to check it out. And this is from three hours ago. And it says, study points to smaller effects of wildfire smoke on warming. Right, so they're saying, oh, it's not quite as bad as they thought. But this is a classic setup for another study that then comes out and says, whoops, we got it wrong, it's actually 10 times worse. So, watch this space for that one, right? And uh, here's one from coming out of America, a university in Iowa, and it says, ISU study shows pandemic had a greater impact on unemployment. Shock horror. And yeah, who would have had to do a study to figure that out, right? And it says, a new Iowa State University study shows coronavirus had a bigger impact on unemployment than previously thought. And that is July 14th, 2020. And uh, yeah, of course, like we've said before, it's not because of the uh, flu-like coronavirus. It's because of the lockdown and the implications that have been put in place by our criminal uh, politicians, of course. And uh, this is one day ago. Long-term side effects of COVID-19 more extensive than previously believed. So a wee change of word in there. But yeah, the same script. And this is one that they are really pushing at the moment. And uh, six days ago, Yahoo Finance, coronavirus infection rate, 75% higher than previously thought. Shock horror, right? And uh, yeah, again, this is one that we are seeing uh, all the time, basically. And uh, here's one from Sky News one day ago. Coronavirus warning from Italy. Effects of COVID-19 could be worse than first thought. What a fucking surprise. And again, like I said, this is one that they are seriously pushing at the moment. And uh, yeah, I can see where it's going. And uh, as you can see, one day ago, South China Morning Post, evening, uh, sorry, even mild COVID-19 cases can cause serious problems in the brain. So yeah, you can imagine, I'm pretty sure you can all see where this is heading, right? And we'll get back to this again. And I will be back tomorrow with a vaccine update and we might touch on it again then. But of course, uh, our champions, Science Daily, well, they have had a busy week also. As always with uh, Science Daily. And uh, yeah, they are the go-to for all you need to know about everything, really. So they're obviously a big company with lots of journalists and researchers, right? And uh, this is a typical headline from the champions. And it says, Pesticide mixtures, a bigger problem than previously thought. What a surprise, right? Uh, here's another one here, same day, 15th of July. Links between video games and gambling run deeper than previously thought. And yeah, I'm sure that won't come as a great shock to anyone. 
because I would imagine the effects of things like gaming and extreme gaming uh, will be extreme and probably worse than we could even imagine, really. And uh, this is another one here from the Champions, and it says, Super genes play a larger role in evolution than previously thought. Whoops, how did they miss that one? So again, as you can see, it's always to fit a certain narrative or a certain agenda, for sure. And uh, in terms of the Champions, Science Daily, well, yeah, they are pretty, pretty shady indeed, uh, to be polite. And uh, we'll look at them a wee bit just now. And it says, Science Daily is an American website that aggregates press releases and publishes lightly edited press releases, a practice called journalism, right? <laughs> About science similar to physics.org and Eureka Alert, Eureka Alert, or Eureka Alert, right? So yeah, they're the go-to, they're just like physics.org, and uh, yeah, they, they do a thing called journalism, which is basically uh, not even journalism, it's basically stealing other people's work and re-editing it as your own, or changing it completely and putting it out. Uh, something completely different. That's what journalism journalism is, basically. And uh, to expand on them at Science Daily, it, uh, the site was founded by married couple Dan and Michelle Hogan in 1995. Uh, Dan Hogan formerly worked in the Public Affairs Department of Jackson Laboratory, writing press releases. Right. The site makes money from selling advertisements. Sure, as of 2010, the site said that it had grown from a two-person operation to a full-fledged news business with worldwide contributors. But at, but at the time, it was run out of Hogan's home, had no reporters, and only printed press releases. Right. In 2012... Quantcast ranked it at 614 with 2.6 million US visitors. Right, so as you can see, it gets a lot of traffic and it's constant at releasing information. But uh, yeah, also, as you can see, it's a two-man job. A man and his wife. Right, so yeah, that is a straight-up red flag. Uh, for me, and in terms of where the man Dan worked at the Jackson Laboratory, and it's uh, known as Jax, is an independent non profit biomedical research institution. Right, sure it is. And um, we won't get into it too much because I will make a video on this Science Daily because there's a lot to get into with them. But would you believe it? They've had a donation from, yep, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. What a surprise, it's Bill Gates again. And as you can see, it wasn't just a couple of quid. It was three and a half, well, over three and a half million dollars. So there you go. And that was for uh, the PVC, P, PCV sorry, uh, vaccine and helping Africa, of course. And in terms of Dan, the man, Hogan, well, yeah, you'll find his name linked to Bill Gates and vaccines quite a lot. And uh, I didn't have to look very far, but right throughout the years, he has been linked to certain studies, certain reports. Uh, as you can see, uh, that last one was from 2015. This one is from 2018, and he's linked again. Uh, Dan Hogan, along with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and that was as, as part of a scientific advisory board. And I downloaded the PDF and had a look at that. And yeah, all very shady stuff indeed. And again, his name is mentioned in uh, a World Malaria Report from 2014. And again, Bill Gates is there, and uh, the University of Oxford, and the World Health Organization. What a surprise, right? And uh, yeah, someone has asked the question already. 
can we trust Science Daily? Well, if you ask me, the answer is a most definite no. You cannot trust them one fucking bit, right? And uh, yeah, I am not going to let Science Daily slip. Uh, we're just touching on them briefly, but we will get back to them. Uh, Dan and Michelle Hogan, for sure, and Mr. Billy Gates. But that is it. I didn't want to keep you too long today. Uh, there, there was a lot to get into. But I will be back tomorrow, and of course on Friday, uh, with the Friday Fix. And yeah, it has been a seriously busy uh, few weeks, for sure, in terms of the media. I remember quoting someone saying uh, in an article that we were, we were experiencing, at the moment, 10 years of change in one week. And yeah, I honestly think that that is true. And everything seems to happen at such a rapid speed. Uh, you, it's hard to keep up, really. But uh, yeah, I will try my best. And yeah, I will catch you all tomorrow and again on Friday. Happy days, right? Uh, yeah, so thanks to everyone who has subscribed. And yeah, catch you next time. And that is about it. Bye-bye.